What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that misses those old Chef Boyardee commercials, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, Stop calling us at 4 in the morning to let us know you can't make it to work today. Background and context. Around 20 years ago, my wife and I were newlyweds. We were attending university and decided to get married at the end of October, a story for another time in subreddit, as I took a physical chemistry exam the Monday after our wedding. We had just moved into our first apartment off campus on November 1st and were very excited to have our very own address and phone number. We were truly independent and it was an exciting time for us as even though we were young, both 19, we needed to establish our own thing, you know? As you might imagine, along with this new excitement came the inevitable learning curve to dealing with grown-up stuff, including a pretty unique issue with our newly established household phone number. I was so proud to figure out how to get this up and going and have the responsibility and privilege of our very own phone number complete with monthly billing cycle. This was back in the time when cell phones were a major vehicle modification project and caller ID was not quite in existence yet. There was the star 69 option for those old enough to remember it, but in general, the phone rang and you answered it to figure out who was calling. Also, things weren't programmable back then and the only way to stop a ring through is to take it off the hook which led to an annoying tone emanating from the phone. And who wants to listen to that 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 goes on to infinity, which still leaks through that drawer and towel you've wrapped around the receiver, or to completely unplug it, which was inconvenient as you'd have to remember to plug it back in when you needed it. And this is why this story could only originate during that kind of time. Being university students, we did not tend to be early birds, as in general, the earliest class we had started at around 9am, and we lived right on the border of our small university. You could walk across campus in 10 minutes easily. But especially so for me, as I have never been a morning person and take a good while to wake up and get going. I also slept very soundly, so this means for the most part, most days we'd be up around 7.30am at the very earliest, but any time that schedule's permitted, more like 11am or noon. Man, just thinking about this now makes me shiver, as I can't imagine sleeping past 8am now. Digression. The main event. Anyway, this is where things started. Because it's been a long time, the exact wording of things is just an approximation. But in general, I tried to convey the important points of them. A couple of days after we had a functioning phone and were attending the end of the fall semester at university, the early morning phone calls began. Like 4 to 5 a.m. phone calls. Set. The amazing new independent symbol of a corded cheap plastic phone is sitting on a small table at the side of my bed, stage left, in a tiny room in a tiny apartment in the far-flung reaches of the landscape. Enter, ring, 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 etc. Me, groggy, unaware, start rolling around. New wife, poke, poke, get that. Ah, uh, ah, huh? hello. I can't make it into work today. My kid is not feeling well. Me, with fog brain and sore ribs poking. Okay. What was that? I start drifting off again. <sighs> the next day, I realized what I'd done. My wife and I laughed about this a bit, but also felt bad and wondered, whatever happened to the person who just took a day off work without really calling in? Had whoever she intended to call reached out to her eventually? Did she get in trouble? Oops, ops, oops. Well, uh, we lived in Minnesota back then, and November often brings snowfall. We lived in the wind capital of the state, so with snow followed drifts and whiteout conditions, where you couldn't see across the street and certainly could not safely drive. As well, it is important to understand that in the small town of southwestern Minnesota where we lived, things are very rural. As in, the town has around 13,000 people that live there, and that's the big city. They had a full-fledged university. 
Most of the surrounding towns in the next 50 miles or so have around a couple hundred people at most. Because of the outsized influence of the big city, people often drove from other towns to work at our booming metropolis's industrial furnaces. The main irons in this sweltering fire were food packing plants, as we did have a rail yard connected to the Twin Cities and other places. How fancy! The particular pillar of industry at issue in this story is the local sparkling sugar water bottling place. The first time it snowed that year, the phone started ringing around 4 a.m. Same setting as before. Ring, 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 etc. I'm sleeping. Wife, awake and annoyed. Poke, poke. Get that! Ugh. Hello? I can't make it to work today. The drifts are too bad and there's no visibility. Ugh, okay. Click. Wife, now fully aware. What the hell was that? Mm, nothing. Probably three minutes later. Ring, ring. Hello? I can't get out of my driveway. I ain't gonna make it in today. Uh, you have the wrong number. Oh, sorry. Bye. Some time passes. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? It ain't safe. The school's been canceled, so I have to stay with my kids today. John's stuck out of town. You have the wrong number. Oh, well, I got this from the office bulletin board. It said to call here if we can't make our shifts. Voice of Lady said it worked. I called the main number. There ain't nobody there. Well, there's some mistake then. This is an apartment. We're students at SSU, and we have nothing to do with this. Okay, well, this sucks. I guess I'll call the main line again. Bye. Passage of a bit of time, but by now we're awake. It's now something like 4.30 a.m. on a day when we most certainly had classes, as they did not cancel university classes very often for snow days. But we could always hope and check, maybe we could sleep in, if we could find out on those early morning newscasts with scrolling cancellations. Spoiler, it was not to be. Ring, ring. Hello? I'm not gonna make it today. You have the wrong number. No, I checked and I'm sure I have the number they told us. They were very clear. Any excused absence requires us to call this number. It's the one to the main room. Every time, I can't get a hold of anyone else except Voice of Lady, and she said it was fine. We live in an apartment and are students at SSU. We have nothing to do with this and we don't know what you're talking about. They were clear. Call this number or we'd catch crap. I don't know what you're talking about. I think they screwed up. Okay, I'll try again. Sounding very unimpressed with me. What the f- I'm just trying to sleep before braving the windy snow to attend my physical chemistry labs or whatever. Sure enough, a few seconds later, ring. Hello? Well, here we are again. Yep, it's early and I'm tired. You have the wrong number. I checked and I'm not falling for that. You just want me to come in, but I told you, I can't. My kids are home today and there's no way I can get a babysitter right now. Stop being such a jerk. You told Voice of Lady it was okay. I'm not taking up the slack for everyone. Really, I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't help you here. They must have screwed up. What do you want me to do here? I am not coming in. Is there another number you can call? This is the one they gave us and no one is answering the main line. Sorry, I can't help you. Click. A few seconds later, ring. Hi. Stop doing this. I'm not coming in today. I can't make it with my car. It will never make it through the drifts. And I have the kids today. We've been over this. We have nothing to do with your work. Wife, low talking. For some reason now we're being polite to them. What's going on? They think we're their boss or something. Stop playing games! I can hear you talking and it's not working! You're not fooling me! That's my wife. Would you like to speak with her? Sure! Hello? Stop this nonsense! You know I'm not coming in! No, really, we are not your boss. They must have given the wrong number. Now, I'm not sure what happened exactly as memory fades, and I think I got up to turn on the news by now. I mean, I'm not getting any sleep at this point, but later on, I check in as my wife's voice was getting louder and heard this. 
Fine. Don't come. I don't care at all. Just stop calling us. Click. Hmm. After several more calls like this, we took the phone off the hook and eventually carried on with the day. Over the next many days and months, we'd get periodic calls informing us of someone who couldn't make it today. Sometimes we'd even get requests to swap shifts and other types of things related to this bottling plant. Sometimes we just said, okay, and hung up. And other times we tried to explain what was up. Occasionally, we'd get into arguments and ensure these people that we're not their boss. I recall even getting one call from a clearly newer employee who was pretty good about it and showed some level of understanding. I think he even told me or my wife he had even heard about the call-in issues, that it was perceived as some kind of attempt to stop people from being able to call in without catching crap and getting docked in pay or something. The Aftermath I believe it was early the following year, a couple of months later, when we received a call from someone that was a manager at Viking Bottling Company that asked my wife, have we been telling people it was okay to miss work? Well, yes, Mr. Manager, we have. And we have been trying to explain things, but there are several very persistent employees who just won't seem to understand. He was not quite understanding, seemed, if anything, angry with us, but I suspect he was upset because the reports he'd been getting of, I swear I called in, were true, and now he had a giant mess to clean up. Turns out, our newly issued phone number, the one that meant so much to us, had two numbers transposed to their office number, and someone had posted our number on the bulletin board. After the error was corrected, we got a couple of calls now and then, and it was less of an issue. But we experienced a few months of early morning calls that taught us the value of clear communication and follow-up exploration when things don't make sense. I still think about those times when I just granted people a day off because I was too tired and incoherent to realize what was going on and get a smile on my face. If you made it that far, thanks and have a great day off work on me. <laughs> Man, that, that sounds kind of frustrating to have to deal with. Now I'm just getting a bunch of early 2000s nostalgia. I just want to like go to Blockbuster and get like The Ring and watch it on a rainy day on like a CRT. Ooh, that's a good movie. The Ring is like one of my favorite scary movies because it's like one of the last ones to actually give me a good scare. But anyways, that wasn't relevant. This story was pretty good. Um, it's nice to hear people like look back on like 20 years ago. It's crazy that that was 20 years ago. Wow. This story's called Mistaken for a Tour Guide at My Own Bachelorette Dinner. Obligatory, I'm on English. Mobile isn't my first language, but it is a close second. I speak it fluently enough, so please let me know if I made any errors. By the way, I know I switched those, so it was on purpose. My hubby and I were looking at wedding photos and were reminded of this. A wholesome, I don't work your lady. Hey, wholesome. Some background. I recently got married to my dear husband last January, before Modelo exploded. My husband and I work in Japan, but we're both expats, so we kept our wedding guest list short and limited to our immediate family and close friends because our families would have to fly here just to attend. It's a big ask. My husband and I are also very introverted, we don't drink, we're not overly fond of parties, and we're both very close to our immediate families. So we thought, instead of having a bachelor or bachelorette party, why not host a dinner for our respective families? We both agreed and our families liked the idea too. They wanted to spend time with us on the last night before we were officially married. He and his family went to another restaurant and me and mine went to another. My family is composed of my parents, my brothers, my sister-in-laws or sisters-in-law, my aunts and uncles. On to the scene! My family and I went to this Chinese restaurant at the hotel we were staying at. My family loves Chinese food, so we thought it was a great choice. We had a whole room reserved for our table, so we had some privacy. Because we were in a room, we had one head waitress who was the liaison between our party and the waitstaff. She spoke Japanese, and I could also speak Japanese, but my family could not. So I sat at the end of the long table so it was easier to talk to the staff. 
because I did a lot of translating back and forth between my family and her, if she asked a question, I would translate it for my family and relay the answers to her in Japanese. If my family had a question, it was the same deal. When the third dish was served, she came to ask me a question about the fourth dish. Here's the cast, there's me, head waitress, my brother. Should we serve the fourth dish individually, or should we let everyone decide how much they want on their plate? Individually, please, thank you. Okay. She made a note in her order tablet. By the way, this party is for the wedding tomorrow, right? Yeah, we're all really excited. Everybody flew in from another country, and it's been stressful, but it's finally tomorrow. The waitress gestures to my brother and sister-in-law, who were, coincidentally, sitting at the center of the table. Are they the lucky couple? They look so good together. Um, I'm the bride-to-be. She was quiet for a full 20 seconds, and I felt so bad for her, so I laughed it off. <laughs> but I agree, they do look good together. They've been married for a good four years already. She sighed, hopefully in relief. I'm sorry, I thought you were the tour guide. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it. Then she excused herself to take care of the fourth dish. What was that about? Is there a problem? She thought you and your wife were the ones getting married tomorrow. Oh, you probably looked like the tour guide for our group. Yeah, that's what she said. Do I really look like a tour guide? I mean, everybody's paired off. You're the only one without a partner. And you're the only one who can speak Japanese. You've been talking to her about everyone's orders and basically running around. I have. <laughs> we told our family that conversation and everyone had a good laugh. I made sure I went to talk to the head waitress afterwards to make sure she was all right. She was. I also made sure I talked to the manager to let him know that his staff was exemplary. We don't give tips in Japan, but I would have tipped her so much if I could. Thanks for reading my story. That is a cute story, and that must have made uh, your brother and uh, sister-in-law feel really good about themselves. At least, th the fact that they're a couple. Like, they think that they look like a good couple, because that's what the... You get what I'm saying. Also, they fly to Japan, and they all want to get Chinese food for the dinner? Come on, there's like so much, like, really good stuff in Japan that you can try. That you can't get, like, anywhere else. Like, there's a uh, horse meat sashimi, you can get maizawa beef. That stuff's pretty good, I heard. I mean, I get it. If you really want Chinese food, there's nothing else that can really hit. But, I mean, Japan's got so much to offer in terms of food. Oh, and also, congratulations on getting married. I hope life is treating you well in Japan as an expat. I'm sure it is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.